We'll talk boxing later, but there is another high-priced competition we want to introduce you to first. This fight is underway in Asia, and it's for billions of dollars in high-speed rail projects. Cambodia, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam are among the countries planning to move onto the fast track. And they are negotiating with Japan and China, who are the two contenders in this battle to revolutionize transportation across Asia. VOA correspondent Steve Herman in Bangkok has the details. Japan has had a decades-long head start in the high-speed rail business, rolling out the first Shinkansen passenger service in 1964. It has not stopped innovating, as demonstrated by a test run of a magnetic levitated train exceeding 600 kilometers per hour. The Chinese, who entered the business in 2007, now boast of more than half of the world's 23,000 kilometers of high-speed rail track. They are reported to be in talks with 15 countries to sell their rail technology. All right, Steve, so if high-speed rail is a race between Japan and China, who's winning? Well, that all depends on uh, who you ask and in which country. The Chinese have, have scored um, some significant deals. They just signed a huge deal with uh, Indonesia. It also looks like they're going to get the first of two major high-speed rail projects here in Thailand. However, if you talk to people around the region, they would say that the Japanese definitely have better quality, but it is a matter of financing a lot of countries, and the Chinese certainly have the advantage there. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. In terms of current investments, what are we talking about here, the difference between what China's putting in and what Japan's putting into this? Well, the Japanese systems are considered to be very high quality, but they're also more expensive. And the Japanese uh, apparently are not as flexible on the financing as uh, the Chinese are. Now, the Chinese have rolled out this um, new bank, a competitor to the Asian Development Bank, the AIIB. And um, there's a lot of money out there. And the Chinese are willing to offer up their system and financing at very good terms that for a lot of countries is going to be considered probably too good to refuse. But the Japanese have been in this game longer, haven't they? Yes, and, and if you look at uh, what the Chinese have operating in China right now, it is very much Japanese technology. Some people might even say that it was essentially stolen from <laughs> Japan, but uh, it, it is a, a, a cheaper uh, model of what the Japanese have been doing. Wow. Now, is there enough to go around for everybody here? Or is, this, is this a friendly competition or is it getting heated? Well, I don't think there's much right now in competition between Tokyo and Beijing that's very friendly. <laughs> uh, some countries are deciding to split the difference, like Thailand. One project will apparently go to the Chinese and another project will go to the Japanese. But uh, the Chinese seem to have uh, an advantage in some other countries such as uh, Cambodia, and we were expecting that perhaps the Japanese were going to get this first big project in Indonesia, but now the, uh, uh, the Chinese and the Indonesians have signed a MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, for the, the project to go ahead uh, with uh, Chinese technology. And yes, there's more than enough to go around. The Chinese essentially have to export. They've got this huge infrastructure they've built up, this industrial capacity with high-speed rail, They've got a lot of track all over China, and to keep the momentum, they have to go overseas now. So what is this going to mean then, Steve, for the future? Well, obviously, if these systems get built and uh, the average person's able to afford to ride on these trains, it's going to make getting uh, across the country for work, for school, for visiting relatives much, much faster. Uh, and that is a big problem in uh, many parts of Southeast and South Asia where the trains are not only very slow, but they're also considered quite dangerous. So there are frequent fatal uh, rail accidents, for example. So these trains will be faster, uh, hopefully safer, and um, obviously as it was for Japan and China in decades past, they'll be uh, revolutionary in terms of infrastructure, transportation, and a lot of other things uh, for many other countries. 
And safer, of course, is always better. A lot of progress here that we know Steve will continue to watch. To get more updates from Steve, our correspondent in Bangkok, be sure to follow him on Twitter. His handle is at W7VOA.